Ireland and France, folks. Six Nations 2023. This is a pretty big game. Number one in the world against number two in the world. Uh, there's a lot to like about this. We're going to go through the squads, some stats from last week, the predictions and recent results. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one might be going to go. But like I said, number one against number two in the world. Both sides come into this one from last week getting a win. Uh, away win, both of them, and a bonus point win, both of them. Uh, both sides will have aspects that they liked about their game. Both sides started pretty well. Uh, the French were probably pushed a bit more than they would have liked, but they still got a bonus point win away from home. And uh, for the Irish, they certainly had patches of that game where the Welsh were in the ascendancy, but they maybe didn't leave the door open for the Welsh guys uh, as much so the scoreboard still looked pretty good from an Irish perspective but um, yeah a lot to like about this one uh, we will start with the Irish lineup because these guys are at home and uh, it's a little bit disappointing to see some of the names that are out but I should say if you've not seen Andy Ferrell's press conference and you want to see a coach who just seems to be loving life uh, go watch the Andy Ferrell press conference on the Irish rugby YouTube channel he's got a smile on his dial um, despite the fact that he's talking about injuries, he keeps keeps it very positive. It's very uncharacteristic. A lot of coaches go through press conferences, they go through the motions, they think the questions are stupid, and um, they just kind of want to get out of there as quickly as they can. Andy Farrell is just loving life. Really, really pleasant press conference to watch in contrast to the majority of them. So, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't he be loving life? He's got the number one side in the world. He's got to face France, who's the number two side. It's a historic occasion. He even talked about, like, he wished he was a fan just going to this game. Because this is the kind of game you would want to go to. So, um, yeah. But he is missing guys like Dan Sheehan's injured. Uh, so that's really disappointing after the shift that he put in last week. As I said, Andy Farrell talked about it being a good thing. Because it's a test for the squad. Going into Rugby World Cup, you need the squad to be tested. Because this is what's going to happen. Uh, Gibson Park's still not ready. Furlong, apparently they asked him if he was even close. They said no. So, uh, wasn't even kind of hinted at selection. Ken Healy's still out. So, yeah. That's, that's disappointing. But if you're looking at Andy Farrell's point of view, this is a good test of the squad. Andrew Porter, Rob Herring, Finley Bielham, that's your front row. So Herring obviously steps up from the bench. And Ronan Kelleher, pretty bloody able replacement to have coming in uh, on the 16 jersey because he didn't play last week. But he, he steps up, which is, um, you know, not a bad replacement to have. Ty Byrne, James Ryan, really impressive last week, especially James Ryan, very, very physical. Um, they continue on second row. The same back row of Armani, Van der Fleer, and Doris. I mean, Doris talking about physical... Geez, was he everywhere. Von, uh, Van der Fleer didn't miss a tackle. So, um, yeah, pretty nice uh, looking starting forward pack. Connor Murray continues on at 9 with Johnny Sexton at 10. Obviously, Gibson Park, as I mentioned, being absent. But Connor Murray, I thought, um, I don't know, man. He, had, he rolled back the years with his uh, performance last week really quick at the base of the ruck. Uh, McCloskey and Ringrose is the same midfield combo. Um, I think he'd be kind of happy with that as well. I know um, Aki kind of came off the bench and was, you know, immense at the breakdown, but I still like McCloskey running some big lines at some um, at some defenders who are probably physically not as imposing as himself. Uh, James Lowe and Mac Hansen are the wings. I mean, Mac Hansen almost got a try. James Lowe got a great intercept, and then he's got that big boot of his, and then Hugo Keenan, imperious in the air last week. Jeez, he's just safe as houses, isn't he? Really coach's dream to have that kind of player at the back to just defuse those bombs that are coming your way. So... Really, really minimal changes. It's basically just, um, you know, uh, the injury to Sheehan, meaning a starting change uh, with Herring coming up from the bench. Uh, Kilcoyne and O'Toole are proper placements. Ian Henderson's there as well. Uh, Jack Conan. Maybe a little bit of pressure on Jack Conan. I don't know. If you're going to come off the bench, I guess you need to make yourself really physically as imposing as you can. Craig Casey, Ross Byrne, and Bundy Arkey. So it is a very, very stable Irish squad from the one that played last week. And that's been the name of the game for Andy Farrell. Uh, in his tenure, basically, he tries to keep the cohesion levels high. Uh, if guys get injured, he obviously replaces them, but he doesn't just chop and change for the sake of it. Uh, France, they have uh, also kept things relatively stable from the squad that played last week. Cyril Bay, Julien Marchand, and Uni Antonio are the front row. The front row battle is going to be fantastic. Um, Cyril Bay up against uh, Finlay Bielham should be a pretty interesting one. I wouldn't say... Cyril Bay is like the most dominating loose head in the world, but he's really efficient. He doesn't give away much, so it's going to be hard for Bielham to get on top of him. And then uh, Bay's around the park game is uh, is genuinely pretty good. 
Um, and then Antonio is a huge human. So his battle up against um, like up against Porter is going to be one for the ages because like these are two proper elite level guys. So yeah, fascinating to watch that one. Uh, Flamont and Willemsa are the same midfield. Midfield second row last week. That would be an interesting midfield. Uh, but yeah, Flamont obviously got that nice charge down. He's got a really high work rate. And Willemsa, kind of like James Ryan, is a pretty big unit. So you kind of look forward to seeing those guys both doing their thing as well. Gillon, Olivon, and Audrey. Olivon gave away a few penalties last week, got himself carded, so he'll be looking to clean up his act, but obviously the French side generally uh, were a lot more penalized than usual. Aldrich got substituted a little bit earlier than normal. Uh, Gillon was maybe the most impressive of the three, certainly won a good, uh, good turnover at the end uh, to kind of keep them out of trouble, but yeah, you feel like the entire French forward pack, um, especially just with the, uh, the old penalty count, is going to need to be better than they were last week. Uh, Dupont Intermac is 9-10. That's um, that's same same. Jalibert has to be putting the pressure on Intermac just in terms of the, the performances he's been able to put in from the bench. He certainly finished that game well last week. But then again, I mean, Intermac set up a couple of tries with his cross kicks and whatnot. So his uh, partnership with uh, Dupont goes on. Uh, more fighter and Fiku 12 and 13. Fiku for mine last week was just immense defensively and uh, his ability to get the ball forward and then uh, Pinot and Demortier. Demortier got his debut last week, uh, managed to score a try on debut which is a pretty good way to start your your account. He's a big guy, he's a tall guy so if they chuck some more cross kicks his way he might give um, Mac Hansen a run for his money because he's probably a fair bit taller than Mac Hansen. I don't know, I haven't looked up their numbers but uh, that'll be interesting to see if that's an option they go for. And then Ramos is there at the back. Missed a couple of kicks, Ramos, last week. But, um, yeah, they were still kind of comfortable enough for the most part. The bench, Balo, Wardi, and Falatea. Uh, that's the same as, as last week. Telfa Fenua as well. Francois Kuss comes back into the side. So he replaces Laveau, who didn't even get a chance off the bench, unfortunately. Uh, Fabien Galtier kind of talked up Horses' experience and the fact that he's missed a bit of rugby, but he's a good guy to have coming back in. Makalu was there as well. Remember, they played him as a forward last week rather than a back. He came on for Aldrit. And then uh, Kuyu comes in for uh, Ligarek, who also didn't get off the bench. Dupont went the full 80 uh, last week. Kuyu is another guy just that touch more experienced than the as yet uncapped Ligarek. And then uh, Jalibert already talked him up being a guy to come off the bench. Um, yeah, I'll be keen to see how many minutes he gets. Keen to see how many minutes is also an interesting factor just because the French are a day shorter in terms of their preparation, right? These guys played on the Sunday, so one less rest day compared to the Irish guys. The, they talked about it a little bit in the press conference how the, I think they stayed in their camp a visit in Italy, but um, they didn't say where it was. Wherever they are, they stayed there, the French guys, to try and minimize the kind of travel time, minimize the disruptions, and um, try to get a full normal week of training in as much as they can. Stats-wise, um, obviously for France, there were some pretty uncharacteristic things about their performance last week. They had the most knock-ons of any side last week with nine, and they had the most penalties conceded with 18. Uh, Galtier mentioned in his press conference that like last year, they were, I think he said, the second best side for the average penalties conceded with like around nine, just behind Italy, and then they've gone and doubled that in their first game. But they did the same thing last year, as he mentioned in the press conference. Their first game of the year, they conceded like 14 penalties, the next game they went and did seven. So, yeah, he's going to be looking for a big, big shift in the in the way they operate, especially at the breakdown. Ramos, like I mentioned, missed a couple of kicks, so he'll need to be on form uh, at the Aviva. They still had the most offloads. They still had the most defenders beaten. They had 37. Ireland had like 33. So um, both sides really, really dangerous in terms of their ball carriers. Ireland, on the other hand, had the fewest knock-ons. I think they had four. So much more efficient in terms of their looking after the ball at 100% line out, which was really pleasing to see. Although obviously with Sheen being out, that maybe uh, takes away from that stat. Um, but they conceded 13 penalties, which for Ireland is also a bit high. It's not as bad as France's 18, but Ireland kind of averaged about 10 last year. So 13 is a touch on the high side. Um, and then Wales actually had more possession than Ireland in the second half of that game last week which is also uncharacteristic i think last game in 2022 like that dominant performance in dublin ireland had something like 60 percent of the position so the idea that wales would have more of the ball was almost unthinkable in that game but for a period it did happen in that game 
uh, last week where Wales were able to just go through some phases. Not able to really knock the door down though. Uh, recent results between the sides. The record is 3-2. to two, So all the games with Andy Farrell up against Galtier, it has gone Galtier's way. Some pretty close ones, I guess though, like 35-27 in 2020, 13-15 at Dublin, so the away win for the French uh, 2021, and then last year was 30-24, to 24, so not, not real kind of lopsided. And interestingly, if you look back at the last five, the average score is 21-21. I think over the last five, Ireland scored uh, 105 points. Uh, France have scored 107. So there's really not much in it between these sides over the last five years. Uh, Predictions-wise, the bookies have got the Irish by five, which is, I guess, a relatively fair statement given they are at home. The rugby forecast algorithm is getting a little bit more, uh, I will say, risky with its picks, saying Ireland by a whopping 15, which I think would be a pretty decent achievement. Uh, remember, this game is on at the Aviva. It's on at 2.15, I think, local time, which is 3.15, I think, in the morning over here in New Zealand, which is a pretty horrendous time. But it is number one against number two in the world, so it's one you kind of have to watch live. Uh, Wayne Barnes in the ref is the ref. Uh, it's on for you guys in the UK. It's free on ITV, so happy days for you guys not in the UK like myself. You can watch it on ITV using a VPN. I'll put a link down to ExpressVPN in the description. You can just set your server to a UK one and jump on ITV. Or if you don't like the ITV pundits like Johnny Wilkinson and Clive Woodward, you can use the Irish services. I forget if this one's on RTE or Virgin, but they're both free as well. So plenty of free-to-air coverage. And if you want to watch in French, the French have got it free-to-air as well. So uh, yeah, VPN down in the description for any guys who want to watch this week's games live or last week's games on demand. Um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. Pretty even between these two teams in recent times. Pretty even in the world rankings. Pretty even most recent results. Pretty even in the stats from last week. There's a lot that's pretty even with these sides. Should be a pretty fascinating watch. They're both missing some key players, but as Andy Farrell said, that's rugby, and sometimes it's just a good test of the squad's depth. You guys let us know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.